All right, welcome to our broadcast tonight, everybody. So we're talking some eBay, and I want to direct this training more towards you guys that are newer here in the program. You know, it's a question I get a lot of, and, and so I'm going to pose it. Usually get this question from you guys week two or three, but you say, okay, I get that we're going to do drop shipping, right? And I, and I get that we're going to use retail suppliers to do drop shipping, but I don't understand how I'm supposed to choose products to sell. I don't know what to choose, and I don't know why I'm choosing it. And, and I want to kind of explain to you what I would suggest you do right off the bat and, and why I suggest that very thing, okay? Now, real quick, just a reminder, when we say retail drop shipping, we define it like this. You're using a supplier like, for example, we're going to pick out Amazon here as our supplier of choice tonight. And what's unique about Amazon is they're not a wholesale supplier. This is just a standard retailer. Anybody can buy stuff from them. And um, they, they basically act as our supplier, right? So we take products from Amazon and we copy and paste them over to eBay. We mark up the price. And if somebody buys it from us on eBay, we have Amazon ship it out to the customer. That is retail drop shipping in a nutshell, okay? Tonight's training isn't about that though. It's about knowing that's the strategy. What do I choose to sell and why, okay? Now last week, the training we did live here, we talked about how there's, there's one sort of do not, and I'm gonna put that here again, do not, well, there's probably more than that, so I'm gonna make a list. But I'm gonna say do not sell electronics to start, okay? Won't go into the details of why that is. I'm just going to say, as a general rule, good rule of thumb, electronics are hard, not a great place to start if you're brand new, especially doing retail drop shipping. Okay? So let's keep that in mind. Um, apart from the do not list, let me, let me write this down first. Before, before you start, okay, can I just suggest that one you sell a few things from around the house um, or at least list them, okay? Uh, eBay, eBay is, is usually okay with you going right into retail drop shipping, but on the rare occasion, if you show up with a brand new account, a brand new PayPal account, a brand new eBay, eBay account, and then you start selling flat screen TVs and expensive gaming consoles, and stereo systems, which in general are kind of like high fraud items because there a lot of them are electronics, but any sort of higher end, more expensive item, and you're using stock photos, a lot of times it looks a little fishy to eBay, and they may flag your account and question you about some of the things that you're listing. Now, you're not doing anything wrong. It just looks a little fishy to them because they're like, well, why is this brand new seller selling all this really nice, expensive new stuff? seems a little fishy. So to avoid that, list a few things from around the house. Or if you don't have anything from around the house, list a few things. Um, we'll say you list a few things from a thrift store, right? Maybe you've got a, a local thrift store you can peruse for a bit and find some cheap items that you can throw up. Or list a few things um, from sale plus discounted retail items that you can find at like a local retail store. Like I, I walked into um, a local grocery store just the other day and they, they, they put out like these giant racks of like old Christmas stuff that they couldn't get rid of that is 80% off, right? That kind of stuff. You could pick up really cheap mark up a little bit, maybe even make some money with, but it it makes it to where you don't look quite so um, suspicious like you're listing all this new stuff, okay? So that's just a few tips kind of before you start. If I haven't mentioned it before, I wanna make sure that's that's very clear right now, okay? Okay, back to the topic of what do I sell. Here's here's what usually blows my clients' minds. I'm I'm just gonna tell you what I tell everybody else. And they say, well, what do I sell? What kind of research should I do right now? How do I find the most trendy or, or popular products to sell? 
I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to do any of that. I'm going to tell you just to list a giant variety of stuff. Okay. So tip number one, list a huge variety of stuff. Okay. Well, what kind of stuff you might ask? Well, let's just, I mean, let's just make a list of, of the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It could be pet supplies, right? It could be sporting goods. It could be jewelry, and I don't want it to be just any one of these types of things. I want it to be a variety. It could be furniture. It could be home decor or outdoor decor, right? It could be seasonal products. Um, the list goes on, right? I could, I could keep listing stuff here. As long as we're saying no electronics, it's probably fair game. Uh, the, only, the only one I'd be careful about, um, about like clothing or shoes, because uh, you deal with quite a few returns in that space. So some of you guys may not want to do a lot of that kind of stuff. Plus, clothing comes in different sizes and different colors, and shoes come in different sizes. Sometimes the variations are a little tougher for my clients to deal with. So I'd like, I'd like you to do more simple products, easy ones to list, pet supplies, sporting goods, jewelry, furniture, decor, seasonal stuff, so on and so forth. And list a huge variety, right? I don't want you to choose a niche right up front. That's not the way we do it on eBay, usually. You don't think what niche do I want to do? And then you start listing in that area. Instead, you start with this really large net that you cast really wide and, and we try out different areas. Okay. Here's the genius behind that. And this, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how off or, or how do I want to phrase this? I can't tell you how often this happens because it happens a lot. All I can say is that it does happen a lot, but I have clients that discover these great niches. So I'm going to say the number one why is um, niche discovery. You're going to you're going to find great niches this way that you wouldn't have otherwise thought of. Okay. My favorite example of this is is my client years ago who sold kind of like you guys was in you know the first few weeks trying to figure out what to sell and listed some jewelry, listed some furniture, specifically found an office furniture section on one of her suppliers, right? And I could do that on Amazon very easily. I could just come here and type in office furniture and I, I would have countless office or, or, or office furniture items. In fact, this is one of 24 of 648,000. But more specifically, um, she found some office chairs. And there were these really weird ones. And I don't mind telling you guys this because this was years and years and years ago. See if I can find kind of the style. Kind of like this right here. This, this is a great example. Kind of like this. Okay, so look at this chair right here. It's a it's a pink mesh office chair. Okay. And it comes in green, blue, orange. Same type of thing. She found this office chair, listed it, among a lot of other things, and sold it. I was like, oh, cool. You know, we, we we made a sale. Thought, okay, well, if we sold one office chair, why can't we sell another? So she relisted it. And that should be a good rule of thumb for you guys. If you make a sale, immediately relist the item, assuming it's in stock. And she sold another one. And then she had like an order of two. And at that point, it, we talked about it. And it was like, okay, a lot, of, a lot of your home decor stuff wasn't selling. A lot of your sporting goods wasn't really getting a lot of interest. But she started to sell these office chairs. Well, the decision we made at that point was to not completely just throw away all of our listings and just do office chairs, but rather to start to emphasize our office chairs a little bit more. So I had her find all of the office chairs she could, and she ended up listing probably 30, 40, 50 of these, continued to list other items so she could be looking to discover other possible niches, but she had found something that might work for her and, and and sure enough it did she sold a whole ton of these office chairs and it turned out to be a nice little niche for her but i'm telling you we would have never discovered that any other way except for just exploring and trying out different niches 
Now, some of you say, well, what about like, you know, in, in a coaching program like this, shouldn't there be some sort of analysis to show me what kind of items are going to be really good so that I don't have to do this whole guess and check thing? Because it feels like you're just kind of shooting from the hip all the time, right? Well, there are ways to do that, and I'll share a little bit of that tonight, but I'm telling you right now, when you first start, one of the reasons why you don't do a lot of analysis and research is is for the simple point that a lot of you guys, I'm just going to write it right here, um, no analysis paralysis, meaning like a lot of you guys, if I give you what to research, You'll research it and research it and research it. And then when you think you have a good idea, you'll research reasons why it doesn't work and then you won't do it. And that, in other words, you do so much research and analysis that it causes paralysis and you do nothing. That, that is the number one problem our newer clients have. Therefore, I think it would be crazy to, to, to give you the keys to the car and tell you to go when, when you're not, you're not really very good at driving yet. Rather, let it, let us show you how to do it first. So so the best way to start this whole thing is to just kind of list anything and everything without taking too much thought to what you're actually listing other than like I said, no electronics, be careful about clothing and shoes and 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 then otherwise list a ton of stuff, okay? 3. This strategy if I can spell it helps you with speed. Speed is the number one factor here that makes this whole thing work. You cannot do well in retail drop shipping unless you are quick at listing. If you're not speedy at listing, you're gonna struggle with this. And most of you guys, when you first start, are not speedy at listing, you're slow. And, that, and that's fine. I mean, I don't know what the average speed is. I mean, if I had to guess, maybe 20, 25 minutes of listing when you first start, a lot of you. And a lot of that's because you're having trouble with pictures. Some of that's because even though you're just trying to pick and choose items at random, you still suffer from a little bit of analysis paralysis because you you don't want to pick things that you wouldn't buy. And that's and that's just a general no-no. So if I can come up here to my, my tips, I'm going to say tip number two, um, don't prejudge anything. Take out your own bias. Just because you wouldn't buy it doesn't mean somebody else wouldn't. I worked with a client a while back who was very particular about what she um, she purchased. Right? She she had a very specific type of product that she would buy in the space that she was working. And so when it came to eBay, she only listed stuff in that space that she herself would have bought. And it, it wasn't selling very well on eBay, and she was frustrated by that because she thought the stuff was great. And it, maybe it was to a few people like her, but to the masses, nobody wanted it because really, it's really expensive stuff. And I never could get her off of that. Like I couldn't get her to put her own bias aside. Forget about the fact that you think that that particular couch is ugly. Just list the couch because somebody else is going to like it. We're not, we're not here to satisfy your needs. We're creating listings and putting products to market that other people want to buy, not you. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. I know it's probably impossible to completely eliminate all of your bias, um, but you have to try to manage it a little bit. So that's tip number two. When you're looking through products, and if I'm here on Amazon looking through office chairs, I personally probably wouldn't ever buy this right here, this this uh, white chair, or even this red one. I prefer more of a more of a black, right? Or maybe a brown. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't list those other ones. And and without pre, I might I might even look at this product too and say it's one hundred and twenty four dollars with free shipping. That seems expensive, even though it's really not. Don't don't uh, don't assume anything. Mark it up, put it up for sale on eBay, and see if it sells. If it doesn't sell, oh well, we learned some things. If it does sell, you may have found a product that you can sell over and over and over again for a long, long time, and that's that's the secret on this thing. 
I would probably take this product listed at 124 and you'll notice it's free shipping as well. And I'd probably mark it up, you know, 40%. So what is that? Well, maybe I'd do 40%, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's 124. I would I would take 124, multiply that by 1.4. And I might sell this for around like one seventy five ninety nine or one seventy four ninety nine and and i and I'm gonna give it a month to six weeks to sell if it doesn't sell in that period of time, then I'll remove it and replace it with something else. so that's another tip I want to put here. Tip number three: give every and I mean that, maybe I'll capitalize it for, for emphasis, give every product four to six weeks to sell. Probably more like six, okay? And it's for the example I've given before, I have found products that do not sell once a week. They don't even sell once every two weeks. They sell once every four to five weeks. But in the space of a year, that's still like 10 to 12 sales, sometimes a little bit more. And if I've got 40 products that sell about once a month, that's 40 that's 40 sales a month off of those products, right? That's still really good. We're trying to discover products like that. Now obviously I'd like to find sellers that sell twice a week or three times a week, but those are more rare. You discover these products as you go through this this pattern of listing something for a while, seeing how it does and then replacing it if it if it doesn't sell within about 6 weeks. Get rid of the losers, keep the winners and you're going to find yourself over time with this great eBay store full of full of really great sales okay um, all right so there's my first set of tips we've got our why um, now let's let's fast forward okay let's say you've been doing this for four or five weeks and 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 at, at that time let's say you've got up I don't know 200 plus listings and you've been filtering a few out but I'm gonna tell you um, I should probably add this in my tip section, so I'm going to do that. Tip number four, you won't close a high percentage of your first few listings. Okay, so you might close like, I don't know if this is different for everybody, but you might, you might only close between five and 10% of your, of your listed items, sometimes less than that. That doesn't seem like very many, right? You, you, so it's like you're telling me, Trevor, I list 100 items and I might sell five of them. You know, how is that even worth my time? Well, it wouldn't be if over time you only sold 5% of your listings. But out of those those 5%, those five out of 100 that you did sell, those may be selling once a week or once every two weeks or once a month for the rest of the year. So you've discovered some really good sellers the other 95 you might throw out, replace with others, and maybe you find another five or six that sell on top of the other five that are currently selling. So now you have a bunch more that are, you filter out the losers, you keep the ones that are making regular sales, and, and over time you optimize this really great eBay store. That's that's the strategy. But see, it doesn't work. It doesn't work if you're not if you're not a quick lister. Because if it's still taking you 30 minutes of listing, it's going to take you too long per listing to really get this strategy off the ground. And and if you're one of these people that is is so hyper analytical that you know you're you're not only are you you sort of like working your own bias into your listings, but you're also out there on eBay and this and and I know some of you guys have done it that are here with me live right now, but you've gone out there and you've looked at other items that are the same item you're trying to list on eBay, but you're looking at your competition and then you're stressing yourself out because you see your competitors that are getting it for a better price and they're listing it for cheaper than you. And then, and then that stops you from listing that item. And then you get frustrated with the whole thing. You got to remember, and this will be tip number five tonight, as far as this is concerned, as, as far as this strategy is concerned, um, you will not, you will not be the best priced with retail drop shipping ever almost unless i mean some of you guys will find some retail drop shippers that you're going to be the exclusive seller on ebay meaning nobody else is selling that product on ebay in fact i found target products that are like that 
I list their products on eBay and, and not only not only does nobody have it, but Target's official eBay store doesn't even have that Target item listed on eBay. So I'm the exclusive, which means even if I'm higher, right, than other places on the internet, I'm still the only offering on eBay. And that's kind of exciting when you can be the exclusive. And that's, I guess that's a strategy for another time. But the point is, is you're not going to be the best price. So please don't, don't let the analysis paralysis get you and stop you because you notice that you're not the best price. Somebody, there's always somebody who's priced better than you. You can beat them with better marketing, better titles, better keywords, and other stuff on eBay. Okay, so back to what we were saying. We're going to fast forward. You've got 200 plus listings up, and, and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I, I've been I've been optimizing my store. I've been keeping the the good ones that are selling. I've been getting rid of the losing the losing ones. You know, what do I do now? You can do some you can do some more advanced research if you'd like. Okay. You can use um, the Amazon best bestseller list, okay, as one, okay. Google it. Just go like this. I'm going to do this really quick because I don't want to spend a lot of time on the analysis part tonight. Amazon bestseller list, like that, and it is going to be this top listing right here, most popular items on Amazon. Look at these items, and if you want to try to list some of the more popular items that are out there, do it. This will at least give you an idea as to what's popular. That doesn't mean that's going to be the best item to sell, but at least you can get kind of a gauge on the market. That's one thing you can do. Um, you can also do this one right here, datalabs.ebay.com. Um, slash popular, and I'm I'm actually going to put this right here for those of you guys who want to get a little more analytical. Again, just a warning: I'm giving you the keys to the car at this point. Be be careful about it because I don't want you to research yourself to death. Datalabs.ebay.com/popular.html. This is what I can use to see what's currently popular and selling really well on eBay right this second. We've got other trainings on this, but if if you want to get into that, you certainly can. But I, I would I would venture to guess that most of you within your first couple of months probably shouldn't spend too much messing with this stuff. The thing that you should focus on really is one, your speed and your efficiency. Okay, because this doesn't work without it. And two, you need to focus on volume. You need lots of listings going up. You need them going up quickly. You need to be filtering out the, the bad and keeping the good, and you do it over and over and over again. And a lot of you guys are going to say to me, this doesn't sound like a lot of fun. It does, you know, this is very monotonous, tedious work. Well, you know what? Does that? I, I get that, but we're not doing this to have fun. I'm, we're doing this to teach you guys how to make legitimate money on the Internet. And I'm telling you right now, if you'll, if you'll do that, as tedious as it is, you can make really good money do, doing this, and you'll learn to – to deal with the monotony, right? Because you're getting paid to do it. And and you know, over time, you slow down a little on your listings, you can keep all those winners you found and then you sit back and you just sell them and and you enjoy the fruits of your labor. It's very front end loaded with work. It gets better over time. I can I can promise you that. So you you you've got to do just that. You've got to give it some time. All right? Um I think that's good. I I hope this kind of explains a little bit better what I'd like to see some of you new newer clients do in terms of the what to sell. Um, oh, one last tip. Rather than like, this is a problem for you guys because a lot of you guys waste a lot of time just kind of clicking around on Amazon or Walmart or whoever your supplier is, picking onesies and twosies, products here and there from different categories. If you find the the chairs category, the office chairs category like I did, list 10 of them, and then find another category. Find the office desk category, list 10 desks. Hop over to you know sporting gear and list 10, 10 hats. And then hop over to the home decor and list 10 little home decor accent trinket type items. And then hop over, you know what I mean? You're, you're hopping around to these different categories and then one by one, you're just slamming out five, 10 listings and then you're moving on to the next. It's far easier that way, and that'll that'll increase the speed at which you're at which you're doing listings. Okay. Okay. That's probably enough talking at you guys tonight. I'm gonna leave it at that. 
I hope that was helpful. Please execute this strategy. If you haven't already, do it. Don't, don't tell us it doesn't work yet if you haven't done it this way. Because what happens is I see a few of you do this. You list, oh, I don't know, whatever it is, 25, 30, 40 items. You close maybe one sale. Sometimes you don't close any at all, and then you panic and you think this this retail drop shipping is for the birds. I, you know, why would I why would I do this? It's a waste of time. You haven't really executed the strategy unless you you do it this way and you do it on a grander scale. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a better perspective. Anyway, thank you for coming along for this eBay training. Um, we'll do some more next week, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. Thanks again for being here.